I recently had an interesting discussion with some photography friends. We got to talking about uh, taking photographs in public and what amazed me was the number of people in the group who were uncomfortable going out and shooting images in a public area. Now the general fear seemed to be that they would get harassed by people who didn't want to have their picture taken. Unfortunately, there seems to be an increased discomfort amongst the public with being photographed in public. Now, I'm assuming that much of this discomfort has to do with a sense that their privacy is being infringed upon, that people who have their images taken feel that somehow the photographer is um, breaking their privacy rights. This perception, I think, has gotten a lot worse in the last uh, few years. Now, the bottom line is that it's getting harder and harder to go out and be a photographer because you never know who's going to accost you because you've got a camera in your hand. Recently, I was watching a YouTube video by Camera Conspiracies run by Casey. It's a great channel, by the way, so I would recommend you check it out. But while Casey was vlogging out on the street, he wasn't taking photographs, he was actually doing a vlog. This very thing happened. She, she didn't want to be in the video? No. YouTube? Everybody? Yes, I did. I'll blur your face out. I will not put you in the video. I do not, but you can subscribe to Camera Conspiracies and life will be good. Okay. She, she doesn't want to be in the video. I'll put a Mickey Mouse face over her. That got awkward. Now, I have to say that this particular YouTuber really handled himself very well because rather than being confrontational, he tried to lighten the situation by using humor. In general, it's probably a good idea to avoid confrontation, to just pack up and go somewhere else to get your photograph or your video. Nevertheless, it is also a good idea to know what your rights are and what you can and can't do with your camera in public. So here are the laws that apply in Canada. As far as I know, these laws are also applicable in the United States and in England. Uh, I think they're probably true of many places around the globe. However, I'm not a lawyer, so it's best to check your local laws to know what they specifically say about your area. Anyway, here are the things that you are allowed to do as a photographer in many jurisdictions. Number one, you can take a photograph of anything and anyone on any public property. So for example, streets, sidewalks, town squares, parks, government buildings, any place that is open to the public. The only time this would not be the case is when there is a specific law that prohibits you from taking a photograph in a particular public space. Number two, you may shoot on private property if it is open to the public, but you are obligated to stop if the owner or owner representative, like a security guard, for example, requests that you stop uh, shooting. So we're talking about malls, retail stores, uh, restaurants, office buildings, um, places like this. You, you can shoot there, but you have to stop if you're asked to stop. Number three, private property owners can prevent photography on their property, but not photography of their property from a public location. So if you're on the sidewalk, you can photograph a place that is privately owned as long as you stay on the sidewalk, as long as you stay on the public space. If you can see it, you can photograph it even if it's 
private property as long as you don't infringe on or trespass on that private property. Number four, anyone can be photographed without consent when they are in a public place unless there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. For example, you can't photograph somebody in a restroom. You can't photograph somebody in a dressing room. These are public spaces, but there is an expectation of privacy in those areas. Number five, the following subjects in a public setting are almost always permissible. Accidents, fire scenes, criminal activities, children, celebrities, law enforcement officers, bridges, infrastructure, transportation facilities, residential, commercial, and industrial buildings. All of these places can be photographed. Now, if there's some sort of an emergency, you need to stay out of the way. Don't interfere. Don't cause rescue delays of any kind. Use your common sense when you're out taking photographs. However, there's no law against you taking photographs and video if you stay out of the way and you show good judgment and uh, respect to what is going on. Number six, for security purposes is rarely an acceptable reason for restricting photography. If somebody comes at you and says you can't take a photograph of this building for security reasons, well, the truth is uh, you can take a picture of any building as long as you can see it from a public space. So if you don't trespass on a private building, uh, you can take a uh, photograph of it. Th the same holds true in a public space. If somebody comes at you and says, you can't take a photograph of this situation or this incident for security purposes, again, uh, that is not true. Uh, you can take a photograph of any thing that is in a public space as long as you're not infringing upon um, a situation where there is a reasonable expectation of privacy. Number seven, private parties cannot detain you against your will unless a serious crime was committed in their presence. In fact, the detainers may face serious legal charges uh, if you choose to uh, prosecute them. So if you're out in public and you are taking a photograph and um, somebody wants to detain you because they don't like the fact that you're photographing them or somebody else um, and they try to stop you from leaving, well, they can't do that. You're perfectly within your legal right to uh, take the photograph in a public place and nobody can stop you and certainly no one can detain you. Number eight, it is a crime for someone to threaten injury, detention, confiscation or arrest because they don't like the fact that you're photographing legally. Nobody can stop you from photographing if you're not breaking any laws, if you're not breaking privacy laws, if they're out on the street and they happen to get in your photograph you haven't broken a law. Nobody can expect privacy when they're out in public. Number nine, you are not obligated to provide your identity or reason for photographing unless requested by a law enforcement officer. So if a police officer questions you, it's always a good idea to answer their questions. In fact, most local laws require you to cooperate with the police. And finally, number 10, private parties have no right to confiscate your equipment without a court order. Nobody can take your camera from you. Nobody can ask you to delete images. Images are like private property. Once they're on your camera, they belong to you and it is against the law for someone to force you to erase your images um, because they don't like the fact that you um, took them. It's akin to 
destroying your private property. Now, let me just say a couple of words about the reasons why there's this increased animosity towards photographers. As I said before, it's because people are afraid of social media. They're afraid that somehow they'll be made to look bad in public, that their image will be put on social media. And while I understand the fear, um, it's important not to get too paranoid about having your images taken in public. The increased animosity towards photographers is upsetting because it makes photographers very reluctant to go out in public, uh, especially in urban environments, to shoot their images. If you're a street photographer, you might think that you can employ you know, various strategies to get around this, like using a long lens. But unfortunately, this doesn't really work because um, it's not very effective. It actually exacerbates the problem by creating an impression that you, as a photographer, are a voyeur. So using a zoom lens uh, gives the impression that you're, you're kind of eavesdropping or that you're uh, being voyeuristic. And it doesn't work. It's much better to um, be upfront and be in the situation when you're taking uh, images. And frankly, no photographer should have to feel anxious and stressed about going out and taking photographs in a public space because the freedom to do so is part of the law and it's an essential part of our culture. And the taboo against taking photographs in public especially with DSLRs, has a chilling effect and can potentially get in the way of people's creative expression. And uh, I just want to leave you with this possibility. Just imagine what the consequences might have been if this kind of a chill was in effect in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. If this was the case, we may never have had the impressive documentation of the culture that we got from some of the great street photographers of the past 70 years. Many of these images are a priceless expression of how our culture has evolved, as well as a glimpse into the lives of many different types of people. While being infused with the photographer's point of view, they also give us a glimpse into how people live their lives and the kind of world that our parents and grandparents lived in. It would really be a shame to put the brakes on this creative impulse to document because of people's paranoia and unsubstantiated fears. Anyway, let me know what you think. Have you ever had to deal with someone who took exception to being photographed? If so, how did you deal with it? Please leave all comments down below and before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. I'd really appreciate it. Until next time, take care and see you soon. And go out there and get some photographs. Bye-bye.